Good evening, First GU friends and family. It's a new season. It's a new day. Join us on Wednesdays as we connect with Christ and our youth for Bible study story time and other activities as we navigate through life with Christ. Ready, set, let's go. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. Today we are going to talk about the power of the cross. Every day, we see crosses all around us. People wear them as jewelry. They hang them on the wall. Sometimes you might see them as a keychain. When you pass by a church, it is not unusual to see a cross on a steeple. But what does the cross mean to us? It means that we have a savior and his name is Jesus Christ. John 3 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And Jesus was willing to give up everything because Jesus loves everyone. 
So let's take a look at today's story, God's story. Jesus loves everyone. Are you ready? Let's go. Story. Jesus loves everyone. So part of God's story is about the people Jesus loves. And it goes like this. When God created the world, it was perfect. There was no fear or sickness or death, and people got to be close with God. But then people messed it up. They disobeyed God. And because of that, they felt loneliness and pain. They needed a rescuer to make things right. So God sent his only son, Jesus, to come to the world and show us what God is like. And a lot of people thought Jesus came for the most powerful and important. People who seem like they're perfect, even though no one is perfect. Only Jesus is perfect. The thing is, Jesus didn't only come to save the most important and powerful people. He came here for the people that others don't like or respect or pay attention to. Jesus healed people with skin diseases just by touching them, even when no one else wanted to. Jesus had dinner with tax collectors, even though religious leaders thought they were sinners. Jesus said, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to turn away from their sins. One day, when Jesus was hanging out with his disciples, some people brought their kids to see Jesus. The disciples tried to make the kids go away. They didn't think Jesus would want to be bothered by them. But instead, Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Don't keep them away. God's kingdom belongs to people like them. Anyone who will not receive God's kingdom like a little child will never enter it. The disciples couldn't believe it. Jesus actually wanted the kids around him and even said that we should trust in God the way kids do. Another time, some rich people gave lots of money to the temple in a big, flashy way, while a poor widow who had almost nothing gave everything she had, just two small coins. Jesus saw this and said, that poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these other people gave a lot because they are rich, but even though she is poor, she put in everything. Jesus didn't care who had lots of money, who had lots of friends, how young or old or sick someone was. He came here for people like the widow, the tax collector, and the little children. You see, Jesus' kingdom is for everyone. While others rejected the sick, Jesus got close to them. When others looked down on sinners, Jesus spent time with them. When others thought they were better than the poor, Jesus valued them. And no matter how old we get, or how much we learn, or how important we are, we don't need to do anything special for God to love us. We are all imperfect. We all sin and disobey God, and we can never do enough things to deserve His love. God loves us freely. And because we can trust and depend on God, we can treat others the way Jesus did. So if you've ever felt invisible, unnoticed, or unwanted, Jesus loves you. If you feel like you don't fit in or that you're not good enough, Jesus loves you. If you've ever worried that you've done too many bad things or that you aren't as good as other people, Jesus loves you. You are the kind of person who Jesus wants to spend time with, and he loves you exactly the way you are. And that's a little bit about how Jesus loves everyone. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. People needed a rescuer. Jesus came to the world. He cared about everyone. 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 Jesus' kingdom is for all of us, and that includes you. And that's a part of God's story. When it comes to loving others, God has given us the greatest example, Jesus Christ. He knew that the best way to teach us how to love was to show us how it was done. Take up your cross and follow me. So what does that mean to us? Mark 8, chapter 34 in the Bible says, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. What did Jesus mean when he said, Take up your cross and follow me? Let's begin with what Jesus didn't mean. Many people interpret cross as some burden they must carry in their lives, a strained relationship, a thankless job, a physical illness. With self-pitying pride, they say, that's my cross I have to carry. Such an interpretation is not what Jesus meant when he said, take up your cross and follow me. When Jesus carried his cross up Golgotha to be crucified, no one was thinking of the cross as symbolic of a burden to carry. To a person in the first century, the cross meant one thing and one thing only, death by the most painful and humiliating means human beings could develop. 
2,000 years later, Christians view the cross as a cherished symbol of atonement, forgiveness, grace, and love. But in Jesus' day, the cross represented nothing but torturous death. Because the Romans forced convicted criminals to carry their own crosses to the place of crucifixion, bearing a cross meant carrying their own execution device while facing ridicule along the way to death. Therefore, take up your cross and follow me means being willing to die in order to follow Jesus. This is called dying to self. It's a call to absolute surrender. After each time Jesus commanded cross-bearing, he said, For whoever wants to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for me will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit his very self? Although the call is tough, the reward is matchless. Wherever Jesus went, he drew crowds. Although these multitudes often followed him as Messiah, their view of who the Messiah really was, and what he would do, was distorted. They thought the Christ would usher in the restored kingdom. They believed he would free them from the oppressive rule of their Roman occupiers. Even Christ's own inner circle of disciples thought the kingdom was coming soon. When Jesus began teaching that he was going to die at the hands of the Jewish leaders and their Gentile overlords, his popularity sank. Many of the shocked followers rejected him. Truly, they were not able to put to death their own ideas, plans, and desires and exchange them for his. Following Jesus is easy when life runs smoothly. Our true commitment to him is revealed during trials. Jesus assured us that trials would come to his followers. Discipleship demands sacrifice, and Jesus never hid that cost. In Luke 9, 57-62, three people seemed willing to follow Jesus. When Jesus questioned them further, their commitment was half-hearted at best. They failed to count the cost of following him. None was willing to take up his cross and crucify upon it his own interests. Therefore, Jesus appeared to dissuade them. This is very different from the typical gospel presentation. How many people would respond to an altar call that went, Come follow Jesus, and you may face the loss of friends, family, reputation, career, and possibly even your life. The number of false converts would likely decrease. Such a call is what Jesus meant when he said, Take up your cross and follow me. If you wonder if you're ready to take up your cross, consider these questions. Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing some of your closest friends? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means alienation from your family? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means the loss of your reputation? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing your job? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing your life? In some places of the world, these consequences are reality. But notice the questions are phrased, are you willing? Following Jesus doesn't necessarily mean all these things will happen to you, but are you willing to take up your cross? If there comes a point in your life where you are faced with a choice, Jesus, or the comforts of this life, which will you choose? Commitment to Christ means taking up your cross daily, giving up your hopes, dreams, possessions, even your very life if need be for the cause of Christ. Only if you willingly take up your cross may you be called his disciple. The reward is worth the price. Jesus followed his call of death to self with the gift of life in Christ. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. And remember, the next time you see a cross, it's a reminder of our Savior's great love for us and our call to follow him. Amen? Come grow with us as we host Vacation Bible School this year. Starting August the 2nd through the 6th at 6.30 p.m., we will host our virtual online classes. On Saturday, August the 7th at 5 p.m., we will have a festival and movie night, food, fun, and fellowship, inflatable jumpers, games, raffles, prizes, and more. Please go online at firstg.org to register for your class. We want to see you there. Please join us for our annual Youth Day celebration. It's going to be held on Sunday, August the 8th. Join us at First Gethsemane at 1010. Thank you for joining us on our journey with Jesus. Tune in next Wednesday as we connect with Christ. Bye-bye.
see 